All right, so we are trying to solve a problem which appeared in J means 2022. What is given to us is there are two sets. One set is actually having this definition that Z is an element of complex number and then modulus of Z plus one upon Z minus one is less than one. And another uh, set is having, again, Z is a, being a complex number. Argument of Z minus one upon Z plus one is actually equal to two pi by three. Then we are supposed to find out what is A intersection B. So again, in such questions, we start with the assumption that Z equals to X plus I by, and then try to see what sort of relation I get. So when Z plus I by is this one, right? So we will get X. So modulus of Z plus one. So again, I can just check that, use that property first of all, that this is modulus of Z plus one upon modulus of Z minus one that would be actually equal to modulus of Z plus one upon modulus of Z minus one. And then we can just substitute this, which is X plus I iota Y plus one divided by X plus iota Y minus one. And then we can have the modulus over here, which means that I could write it as X plus one whole squared plus y square, square root of that, upon square root of x minus one whole squared plus y square. And that is actually less than one, what is given to me. So both of them are positive, so I'll just cross multiply. So this will become x plus one whole squared plus wow. So let's write it again, x plus one whole squared plus y square and that is actually less than equal to x minus one whole squared and then plus y square and then what we will do is we will square on both sides so that we can solve this so this will become x plus one whole squared plus y square and this will be less than x minus one whole squared plus y square now what we have to do is basically we have to expand this so this will become x square plus one plus two x and this will become y square this will become x square plus one minus two x and this will become y square and what we'll see that all these things are getting cancelled only thing which is remaining is four x is actually four x is actually less than zero or we can say that x is less than zero so that is one relation I got. So I just got X is less than zero. Then we have got another one, which is again Z plus argument of this term, argument of, argument of Z. This is this times Z minus one upon Z plus one. So Z minus one upon Z plus one. And that is actually equal to two pi by three. So we will write this down again, right? And then we will see what do we get here. So this is going to be giving me argument of, again, X plus I, Y, iota Y, basically, minus one upon X plus iota Y, my plus one. is actually equal to two pi by three. Then we got to, I'm just taking this and solving it because we have to first make it a complex number, then only we'll be able to take this argument, right? So this will become x minus one plus iota y upon x plus one plus iota y. And then I have to multiply by its conjugate, which will make it x plus one minus iota y upon x plus one minus iota y which will make it x minus one into x plus one, which will become x square minus one. So this will become x square minus one. And similarly, I, iota y minus iota y square will become minus iota square y square. So let's write it one more time. And then now multiply the uh, vertical, the imaginary part. So then I can just take out plus i times y common. And then what I get here is this will become X plus one. And then there will be minus times X minus one. 
right? So I could write it as minus times x minus one. So let's write it as minus x minus one. And then in the denominator, we will get x plus one whole squared and then minus i square y square, which will become plus y square, right? So we can directly write plus y square. Now here again, what we will have here is x square and this will become plus y square and this will become minus one and this will become plus iota times y and then x and x will cancel out and this one and one will become two times y, right? Upon x plus one whole squared, right? x plus one whole squared and then plus y square. So if I look at this, my argument will become basically tan inverse. I could say tan inverse this entire thing, which is two times y upon this entire thing, x minus one whole squared plus y squared. Why? Because see, I could write this as entire thing separately like this, x squared plus y squared minus one upon x. So this is gonna be x plus one whole square plus y square. So I'm not going to solve it because this is anyways gonna get knocked off because I have to get the argument, right? So this is two times y and then i upon x plus one whole square plus y square, right? So this is what is my entire thing. The real part, this is my imaginary part. So imaginary part upon the real part, which is x square plus y square minus one upon x minus again, I could write the same thing again, x minus, this will be x minus one whole squared and plus y square, right? And this is gonna be equal to two pi by three. Then I can send this to the other side. This will get canceled. What I'm having is two y upon x square plus y square minus one is tan two pi by three, right? Which is nothing but minus root three. So tan 2 pi by 3 is value, which will be, you can say this 2 pi by 3 is nothing but pi minus pi by 3, right? And tan of pi minus pi by 3 will be minus tan pi by 3, which is root minus root 3. Now, basically I can multiply and cross multiply. So this is x square plus y square minus 1 and divided by 2y minus root 3. Why did I do it is because I want to keep it in the circles format because I saw that this is an equation of a circle. So this will become x square plus y square plus 2y by root 3 and then minus 1 equals to 0. Now what you get here is that this is your circle whose center is that basically here. If I again, again compare it with x square plus y square plus 2gx plus 2fy plus c equals to zero. What I get from here is that g is actually coming out to be zero. f is coming out to be minus one by root three. And then your c is coming out to be minus one, right? So you can check the uh, center. So center is gonna be, for the circle is gonna be minus v minus f, which is zero. And then this is what will be your center of the circle, right? So um, if this, F, f in this case is plus one by root three actually. I, I just wrote minus. Minus came here to plus, right? So this will become minus one by root three because your center of the circle is gonna be minus g minus f. And then radius is gonna be, again, if you want to calculate, this will become one by root three whole squared, right? And then minus c, which will become plus one, right? And this will become one plus three by three, which will become two by root three. So my radius has come out to be two by root three. So again, I mean, I hope you guys know the formula. If you don't, then I'm just writing it down again. So R is gonna be equal to G square plus F square, G square plus F square minus C. And so here that is what I have done. And then your center is gonna be equal to minus G minus F, right? So, now what we see is that this is a circle, if I'm just trying to draw this. So this is looking like a circle whose center is at basically 
zero comma minus one by root three. So if I'm having this as my x axis as my y axis, so zero comma minus one by root three somewhere over here, uh, zero comma minus one by root three. And my radius is actually two by root three. So I have to go like here, this will be uh, two, one by root three again, zero comma one by root three. And my circle would be, again, if I go down here, two by root three here, so this will be zero minus three by root three. So my circle is gonna be passing something like this, as in like, this is gonna be my center and circle would be passing some word like this. So this is the equation of the circle actually. Now I have to find out A intersection B. So this is my set B. My set A was just that X was less than zero. So all the reason over here, X less than zero is actually this side, right? So what we get is a portion of the circle which is actually lying in the second and the third quadrant, right? That is what is my answer to A intersection B would be. So you can see that this is not an empty set, a portion of the circle centered at zero comma minus one by root three that lies in the second and third quadrants only. So this is what is gonna be my answer, okay? Um, so this is not gonna be my answer because as you can see, a portion of the circle is also gonna be lying in the third quadrant, right? So because of this reason, this is what is my common reason. If I see, actually this is gonna be my common reason. This is what is gonna be my common reason which is actually lying in both second and third quarter. All right, so hope you understood this question well. If you have any questions, please do ask them in the comment section below and I'll be happy to answer your queries. Thank you so much for watching this video. Have a good day.